This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The Revolution with Juan McCartney is sponsored by Advantage Insurance, Burger King, Central Bank, Commonwealth Bank, the Digital Transformation Unit, Fidelity Bank Bahamas, J.S. Johnson, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, Ron's Electric Motors, Wendy's, and Wilmax Pharmacy. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. My name is Juan McCartney. Hope your weekend was a restful and or productive one. Uh, I had a good uh, weekend as far as uh, not being too stressed out is concerned. We're going to talk today about uh, a couple of things that are in the news. So we'll talk about the uh, tragedy at sea for certain. And then I note that they have some of the... uh, pediatric uh, COVID-19 vaccines in the country. We can talk about that as well. And you got a few other tangential issues that uh, may not necessarily need to be thoroughly uh, discussed today. Uh, But there are things that are going on that we're going to keep an eye out with. Uh, Russia labeling the Bahamas an unfriendly country. I saw that one coming from a while back. Uh, I don't... uh, Anyway, let me not pile on too much for y'all today. So you know, for everyone's head explodes. Uh, we have Chester Cooper uh, flaying Michael Pintard over the Grand Palm International Airport. And of course, we have Sean A. Miller bringing home uh, the world championship, uh, outdoor world championship, 400 uh, meter gold uh, for herself and for the Bahamas. Sean A., we're proud of you. Uh, we love you and uh, you're a great uh, ambassador for the Bahamas, and you're a great athlete, and we wish you continued success. Uh, she says she's going to start focusing more on the 200. Uh, that's also very competitive, and uh, we wish you all the best. All right. You have established yourself uh, as one of the best 400 meter uh, runners in history, uh, period. So it's just outstanding. All right. The reason she doesn't have a world record is probably because the I think it was the Germans, they were juicing. Um, but, um, you know, it is what it is. But we're proud of you. Uh, great stuff. You know, we love you. And uh, keep on keeping on. Okay? Now, I, I want to talk about the situation with the... Uh, Uh, Haitian migrants, um, I have a lot of uh, questions, I would say, uh, thoughts, right? Um, Concerns uh, also, uh, myriad concerns, and it just speaks to uh, a level of, boy, I don't know if I want to call it symbiosis. Someone give me a different, uh, someone give me a synonym for when people are unable to extricate themselves from a relationship or are in a relationship that has uh, repercussions, consequences on both sides, uh, but they're unable to extricate themselves from that relationship. My mind draws a blank at the moment. All right, so that's where we are. So I get uh, upset sometimes because anonymity provides lots of people with the comfort of having cover when you say the darkest, vilest thoughts deep in your heart that you know you wouldn't say in polite company. Um, and therefore, we get a lot of texts like that and everything, and it, 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 it really irritates me. And so I'm trying not to be irritated by it. I know that's probably a part and parcel of it. I think that we need to speak about what's going on with uh, Haiti and how it um, impacts us and what's going on with Haitians here and Bahamians here and how that impacts everything. Um, Soberly and honestly, right? Uh, We honestly uh, have a problem, all right? 
And it's not a simple one. And it often codependent. Is codependent? We're going to table codependent. Codependent. All right, we're going to table, table codependency. That is what works for us. All right. And I think it does work in some senses because you have behaviors who are involved in the human smuggling as well. Um, so we, and people get upset on both sides. Like you have some members of the Haitian community. I saw some people on, on Facebook were talking about, oh, Juan McCartney is like anti-Haitian and racist. I'm like, me? I mean, first of all, I don't, I don't know all y'all to like, not like all y'all. And it's incredibly not true. I don't have any of that in my uh, heart. Xenophobia, racism, none of it. All right. And then we death spiral. Well, that's that's a phrase, but that that will I'll table that too. That's not that's not too bad. Yeah, because that's it's there's a lot of death involved. All right. You know, uh, I don't have any animus toward anyone, um, uh, any particular group. I won't lie and say I like every single human being I've ever come in contact. That's just not the case. But I don't have any animus toward any particular group. But I think when we speak about Haitians in the Bahamas, we try to take away their humanity and just speak about them as if there's some monolithic hive mind operating to our detriment uh, in concert, right? Uh, that doesn't have any love for the Bahamas, that doesn't have relationships that are spanning a lifetime with Bahamians, and that's not the primary concern uh, in their entire life. Uh, it may inform a lot of things about their situation in life, but at the end of the day, we're all humans. Uh, we certainly have cultural differences, uh, but Haiti and the Bahamas have been uh, interlinked. Interlinked. Is that, the, is, that, is that the word I want? Interlinked. Interlinked for centuries, right? Centuries. Okay? And Haiti has just an extreme problem. It says parasitic. I don't know that paras like that. That's kind of a pejorative. Right? That's not necessarily what I mean. Now it is a problem. Okay, uh, and that's why I said we have to speak honestly. We have a problem with illegal Haitian migration. It, it is a problem. We do not have the resources to keep up with the flow of migrants uh, from Haiti, and that's just reality. All right. Now. The next thing is you got to look at what's happening in Haiti. So sometimes you're like, okay, what can we do in the Bahamas? Let's do that. But also let's look at what's happening with our neighbor because it's a problem. Haiti have a problem. As I said, let's speak honestly. Haiti has a problem. And every time I talk about places with problems, you hit me with your utopian view of, of, of what you want the world to be. Haiti got all kinds of millionaires, more millionaires than the Bahamas. Does it? And, and, if, and if it does, what, is, what does that mean? It, while you're cloud chasing. I'll acknowledge that he's got lots of millionaires, billionaires even, right? If it does, uh, what does that say about their contribution that people are willing to risk their lives just to get away from there, right? So I don't think the solution to talking about Haiti is go, it's got all these millionaires, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I feel you. That's like you talking about the Bahamas. And we're talking about a specific problem uh, with, with uh, let's say, poverty in the Bahamas. It's got all these billionaires. Yeah, but y'all ain't got running water in Baintown, dog. Like, after 50-plus years, while you out here, Clout, I wouldn't be hollering too much about all that uh, while I still have these issues. So I want to speak honestly about it. Haiti has a problem, a major, major problem. I was just reading up a uh, week before last about the one-year anniversary of the death of Jovenel uh, Moise. Listen, the rule of law in Haiti is an illusory, uh, not certain, uh, often intangible thing that your whole president could get murdered in his house. And a year later, the United States of America has charged more people in connection with his killing than his own country uh, should speak to how dysfunctional the system is. And so it was tenuous before uh, Jovenel Moise was killed, and it is much, 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 much worse now. Haitian gangs have see, uh, seized more territory. 
They are, it is no secret that they are murdering, slaughtering people. Uh, th these are just facts that you can go look up. You're all, here's how bad Haiti stuff is, right? And I'm, I'm going to say Haiti's like the pit. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying understand why people are probably risking their lives leaving. Ariel Henry is the acting uh, prime minister in Haiti, right? Ariel Henry was investigated by the judge. They're on their like fifth judge who's investigating. And they're, they've attempted to kill some of the, the judges who are investigating the thing, right? That's where Haiti's at. The entire UN peacekeeping force can, although that's a different story we won't get into. They may be actually trying to do some uh, counterintelligence and counter... Anyway, let me not say things I don't have facts for at the moment. Ariel Henry was investigated. Uh, it was a part of the investigation of the murder of Jovenel Moise, right? And so they've arrested like more than 40 people. I'm, I'm not sure any of them have been charged, okay? Ariel Henry's phone records show that he spoke with one of the people in custody for the murder of Jovenel Moise before he was murdered and after he was murdered, spoke on the phone. Phone records show incontrovertible evidence that he spoke with one of the men they have in custody for the killing, of who actually they b believe went and go killed him. That's their acting prime minister. All right? It's become a farce, right, uh, in Haiti. So, so that's why, that's where Haiti is uh, today, in a state of dysfunction, all right? So I can understand why people would, I'm going to tell you what I understand, I'm going to tell you what I don't understand, and you out there can help me if you are part of this community or connected to this community, you can help me to understand what I may be missing, all right? Aside from who's at fault, we'll talk about that too. The, I understand you getting on a boat uh, because you're fleeing either extreme violence, because these uh, Haitian gangs ain't nothing nice, um, or you are trying to get reconnected with your family members who had previously left, uh, or you just can make a way. It just ain't no opportunity. It ain't nothing. I've been trying. I love my country. I got to leave. I can't. I, I love you, but I can't be with you right now. I'll carry your heart and my heart, but uh, I can't stay. All right? So I get that. I don't condone it. I don't condone illegal migration. All right? I don't feel as though I should have to clarify that at the beginning of every conversation, but let me just say I don't. I don't condone any illegality. All right? Uh like that uh, with regard to any of that stuff that is a problem with that. So I get it. I get why you would leave and come. Now, I've seen so many people die because we're alarmed that 17 people have died, as we should be. I've covered instances, incidents in the Bahamas where more people than that have died coming from Haiti here. I've covered story after story after story about people dying trying to come here from Haiti. Now, clearly, I don't know what the attrition is in terms of people who die, because I don't know how many people are coming, but clearly they can have successful voyages where people come, all right, to the Bahamas. So they've made a pretty solid business out of it. It's completely uh, immoral and unjustifiable uh, that they are uh, helping to smuggle these people in or organizing uh, a smuggling uh, circuit. It is insanity, and it needs to be stamped out. Um, and we can look at a different pathway uh, for Haitians to come. I get why you would come here for a better life. Help me understand this. If you're here, what better life do you figure you'd have living illegally in the United States than living 
illegally here is what I'm trying to figure out. I don't get it. I get, let me say this, and it's unfair, right? I get why the Cubans would do it. I do get that. Uh, absolutely, because the United States policy toward uh, Cubans is different because of what's going on um, in with the Cuban government, their, their issues with the Cuban government. All right. What... Uh, I can understand. So help me understand. I want to understand the circumstances. What circumstance do you see uh, that would cause someone who is already here, who, and I've heard, they've said the reports that people have to $8,000 to get on these vessels. Someone who is already here, who can uh, get their hands on eight grand cash. What? Better life will you have in the United States? I'm confused. Uh, you can do nothing in the United States. Uh, being an illegal uh, Haitian migrant, uh, then you can do uh, here. All right. Uh, if you don't have uh, some sort of claim uh, if they're allowing you to uh, claim refugee status, etc. We got to go to a break. All right. I don't understand what better life you think you're going to have over there. All right. Now, if you are in the United States already, and maybe this is why, maybe this is why they're doing it because and it's tricky because you have to already be in the States and then you have to apply for temporary protected status. And that's just temporary. Um, that's going to end next year. And you have to meet uh, all your requirements and you have to be actually uh, residing there and have some sort of residence there. Um, I'm not 100% sure on every requirement of it, but most people who are found illegally in the United States are entering the, the United States illegally they're going to be deported, all right? Uh, they just deported, what, 14,000 uh, Haitians uh, uh, several months ago uh, when they crossed the, the southern border. Uh, the Haitians that you see now, they're getting closer and closer to uh, mainland Florida. They deport them. I, I don't understand, and I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm not trying to be mean. Tell me what better life you're going to have in the United States as an illegal immigrant uh, that would cause you to take yourself pregnant when clearly one of the women who was dead is pregnant was pregnant this is going to cause you to take your infant child on a boat in the middle of the night uh being piloted by someone you don't know what better do you see there that's going to allow that's going to cause you to make that decision i don't understand it and i'm asking that you could maybe help me understand it all right, we got to go to a break. We'll be right back. important collecting your money can be to the success of your business. Start your relationship with Fidelity today so that we can show you the many options available to you with our merchant services. From click and pay options online to merchant terminals and e-commerce options, we're here to help your business succeed. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit any of our branches. We're not always able to see the storms in life approaching. 
but we can take the necessary steps to be prepared to ensure the safety of ourselves, our loved ones, and our property. This hurricane season, trust J.S. Johnson Insurance agents and brokers. We'll be here to help you get back on track in your time of need. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. The King wants you to take a walk on the tangy side with the all-new Zesty Whopper collection at Burger King Nassau. Enjoy the classic Zesty Whopper with two types of cheese, zesty sauce, and crispy onions stacked on 100% flame-grilled beef. Or go zesty on our plant-based Whopper and crispy chicken. All three are saucy, crunchy, and full of flavor. And only available at Burger King Nassau. Visit any of our seven locations and enjoy a Zesty Whopper as a combo or as part of the King's Feast at Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Good uh, afternoon, Bahamas. Welcome back to the revolution uh, here on Guardian Radio at 96.9 FM. My name is uh, Juan McCartney. So good to have you with us. So we're talking about the incident, and I don't, I don't, to me, the most productive, and the search continues, uh, 70 people dead. The most productive uh, conversation that I can have about it is addressing what would fuel such an incident. So it is a grave tragedy that that that, that those people have died, um, I, I, and I'm trying to understand what leads up to that. So, and I'll get to your text messages in a minute. Everybody who's headed in the same direction doesn't always have the same story. Right, so you got a plane load of Bahamians uh, going to Florida legally. More than likely, if it's a hundred people on a plane, there's like eighty different reasons that people are going. Maybe you know different specific pathways and things they got to particularly. Yeah, I got to go to the fridge. Just well, I'm just going shopping. I'm going to Disney World. There's different reasons. So I imagine sixty people on a a vessel. there would be a lot of different stories. So I don't know everybody's story. But something made you get on that boat. And I don't understand it. I don't understand. And I don't, again, I don't condone illegal, my, uh, illegal migration, shanty towns, et cetera. But I don't understand. If you're here, and I just have a difficulty leaping this hurdle. If you are here, what compels you to try to get there by paying $8,000? I, I don't understand. Uh, and the United States is very nice. I lived there for some time. Uh, I get it. But your goal, I thought, was to get away from the inability of being able to make a, a good life for yourself in Haiti and or the violence, confusion, disorganization, um, the lack of resources that are pumped into... Uh, the national infrastructure. And again, uh, Haiti is a beautiful place. I've been there. Uh, a, gr- a lot of great, great people, right? Uh, but the government is a dysfunctional one. So, for instance, there's no free public school in Haiti, all right? Like, not nationally. You got some churches and stuff will organize it. And in some areas, they have schools. People set up schools. It ain't the, how we sit up here and go, uh, yeah, education and this much for the, all that. They don't have all that, all right? Uh, so I, I understand you're saying, look, I can't. My kids can't get a proper education. They don't have a shot. They're poor, right? So we trying to leave. I get it. I don't condone you leaving that way. But I understand what desperation would cause you to do. But if you are here, what better life is there in the United States for you? I'm, I'm confused. All right? 
That's what I'm confused about. All right, let's do some text messages. And you may, be, you may say that's a weird sticking point, but I, for me, I'm like, why? If you're here and you're here and you're able to work to the point that you can make $8,000 to pay for the journey, what compels you to go? Now, if you're saying to me that, okay, their children are there, their parents are there, then I, I get wanting to go. I get it. Uh, I still don't know if I get getting on a boat in the middle of the night with some person I don't know. That, that's, that's just me. All right? And I, and I don't think that's an unreasonable position to take. Like, I want to go to, I have family, I want to see. I got, but if I can't get there conveniently, I'm going to try to, you know, figure out how to do it properly in any event. Says many Bahamians have been agitating for our government to address this legal immigration problem with more urgency, especially Haitians who risk their lives to come here. We must step up protecting our borders and our national security. Start by sending stronger messages to violators who assist and participate in this deadly migration, like intolerance of shanty towns, etc. Y'all realize it's been a year since like Cheryl Graham Bethel adjourned the uh, shanty town uh, hearing, the injunction hearing to give a final ruling. A year. It's been four years since the case started. This says, Juan, don't worry about people calling you racist and all that, but please don't be a Haitian sympathizer. I mean, I sympathize with these people. I won't lie to you. I sympathize with people, man. People, I don't, really, I don't look at them like that and go, well, it's a Haitian. I don't have any sympathy. I, I don't look at it like that. I got a problem. I ain't got a problem with nobody except the criminals. I got a problem with them. Them I have a problem, a major, major problem with. One of the Haitians here and want to leave, that means it's really bad here. Is it? Is it that bad? Like, what? okay, so, so how much better is it in, in Florida? What am I missing? Says they're going to family one. My kid's dad was headed to Florida to family. He was sent by his mother and eldest brother. They he had a job, but they wanted better for him. I guess. I mean, I I, I gotta do a deeper dive into the logistics of this. Juan, did you see the tweet from Adrian White citing a Tribune article in the PM? Uh, what is going on in this country? I did see that. That uh, was an incredibly tone deaf thing for him to do. Um. Very, very, uh, there's a lot wrong with it, but I won't get into it. It says they're grown folks, except for the couple of children that lost their lives, and I'm sure it was not their choice, so I doubt they were going to reunite with family. And they were making it because they had $8,000 to waste. And it says, I want, okay, so in most cases, even though they're there illegally, they can work under the table and make more money. Also, sometimes relatives send the money or pay. Okay, okay, so... There's an even bigger illegal labor market in Florida, I guess, is, is what's happening than in the Bahamas. I could, I mean, again, I've never been in a situation where I felt like getting on a boat in the middle of the night, an overcrowded boat in the middle of the night with no proper facilities. I've never been in a situation where I had to make that uh, choice or even consider that option. So I don't know how, how it's going with, with uh, everyone, but that seems... That seems like a lot if you've already made it here. There's, there's, there's pathways, you know? See, for anyone going on a boat, boat capacity shouldn't be more than a third or half of the boat length. Even people going to Rose Island be overload, overloading their boats barely above the water. Yeah, I saw that uh, boat going to Crab Fest was uh, stuck the other day. We had a call? Sure. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hey, good day. How you doing, Mark? I'm good. How's it going? All right, all right. Uh, this boy, one, you was hit it right on the head. When you said they repatriate 14,000 people from the U.S. out of this, but a lot of times that is be them trying to get back. Because they didn't grow up there, just like you. I mean, you didn't grow up someplace, and then they dropped them. But I understand when they dropped them in Haiti, that's it. Right? And I see some of them living in box and stuff on the street, but they didn't, they didn't pretty much grow up there from their whole life. 
and they have a network. Oh, let's say, let, you know, just drop your, I mean, from when you're going back, you're going back to your family, then they got you set up to do whatever, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Like, so they have a whole, or they're like, like us, they, they, they little organized with it, you understand? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to infiltrate it, like, because they, they, they secretive. They're secretive, like, you right around you, you know what I mean? So, and then, like I said earlier once, like, I don't understand why even, and we are, we kind of slack, I, I mean, in the Bahamas, because even with the oil drop on the, the defense force supposed to, to patrol the port. We're supposed to know who going and coming out of Nassau, Abaco, all these major islands, because that's where the, that's where the action is, on the port. The, the, people ain't trying to go to see the stay out to sea. They're going out to get to our land. That's where you need to patrol, the land. Mm, you understand? Yeah. The port. Anyway, yeah. Have a good day, man. All right, bro. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm trying to fit. Like, I ain't saying this to land of milk and honey right here. I'm just saying you could do all right. I mean, if you're already here, I don't know about getting on a boat. But again, I'm not in that uh, situation. And I'm trying to understand. This says also this would be the scenario relative spouses who are there and have documentation want them to come over to try and get them status. Most of the time they have somewhere to stay and have people to help them get, help get them set up. Okay. This is, but like you said, many different family and individual circumstances. Yeah, that's, that's, I, for certain. All right. For certain. And I have explored uh, migrating legally uh, to a different country. Jeff Lloyd, and to some extent my wife, although she was down to go, convinced me otherwise. But I have thought about it. And you know what I thought too? And we have this luxury in the Bahamas, right? That I get, that I would assume, like millions of Haitians don't, right? I sat down and I said, listen, and I think the Haitians probably think this, and that's why there's a lot of frustration. Um, I was thinking about leaving, right? And I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do when I'm going to leave? I'm going to have to rent a place and apply, and I'll apply for a thing and rent a place, and there's different avenues you can go there. I'm going to have to save my money, spend my money. To do what? To make like a million dollars? Like, it's just the land of opportunity. I'm going to go, you know what I mean? And I was like, I looked around me, and I was like, these people who, I was talking to a guy, he was an Orthodox, Greek Orthodox priest, all right? This man had no idea what was west of Blue Hill Road, okay? Uh, west of Blue Hill Road or uh, north of uh, Meeting Street. No clue. All right? And he was here for three years. I spoke to him at a wedding. He was here for three years. He's a young guy, right? He was here with his wife. He could not tell you what was what was east of Blue Hill Road, uh, going along Bay, or what was north of Meeting Street. Uh, period. All right. He for three years, and I looked and I look around at all these people who have such a wonderful life in the Bahamas, who ain't tripping on no crime, who ain't that they don't come re, it don't come touch them. All right. I look around and I go, if these people can live in the Bahamas and have a great time and be uh, worry free clothing, money is a factor, then I'm going to stay and I'm going to live like these people. I'm not going to leave my country to all these other people who are having a great time. All right. We got a break or are we just going to go straight through? Anyway, let me know. There's a lot of your text messages. I'm going to get to them. Uh, and, and let me say this, right? Uh, if it's a chance, well, let's go to a break. I'll say this before we go to a break. If I could be gone from you and I want to be with my family always, right? But if there is a remote possibility or some likelihood that you could die trying to get to me, I would rather... You be alive and I never see you again. Then knowing that you died trying to get to me. All right. 
And that's my own flesh and blood. Me, I'll do anything. I'd swim if I have to to be to my children. So I get it. But I wouldn't want you to put yourself in that situation uh, over coming to me. Right? It seems incredibly risky, but again, I've never been in a situation where I'm so desperate. I don't get why when you come here, there's another leap. But again, uh, different circumstances, I guess. Uh, we got to go to the break, and we'll be right back. You do coffee your way. Double shot decaf cappuccino. Light roast Colombian no milk. You do vacations your way. Hiking boots, tent, mountains. Five-star hotels and theater. And now you can do insurance your way. Online. Email. Chat. WhatsApp. Or in branch. For home, car, travel, boat, or business insurance, do it anyway with NUA insurance agents and brokers. Visit NUAinsurance.com, call, or stop by a branch today. At Ron's Electric Motors, they repair and rewind all major brands of electric motors, including water pumps, generators, and generators back end, welding machines, electric lifts, air compressors, battery chargers, and more. They equip to handle up to 850 kilowatts and rewind up to 450 horsepower motors. They're conveniently located on the corner of Wolf and Clarence Roads and are open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays till noon. They offer 24 hours emergency assistance. You can reach them at 242-356-0249. It's Regatta Time again with Sand Dollar and the Rollville Development Association in Exuma for the 78th Rollville Regatta and Homecoming. All roads lead to Exuma, July the 28th through August 1st for Sand Dollar giveaways all weekend. Get ready for live performances, gospel night, battle of the DJs, boat sailing, mixology competition, and so much more. Come and hang out with the Sand Dollar team to learn about the Bahamian Digital Dollar. Use Sand Dollar at the Regatta site to avoid having to worry about cash. Check out www.sanddollar.bs for more information about the digital dollar. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. My name is Juan McCartney. So good to have you with us. Let's go to some of your text messages uh, really quick. This is Sai. I'm of Asian background one, but I don't know why that reality doesn't scare them at all. I guess they take the journey with faith in God that it will not happen to them. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, boy, whew. I have my son, dog, but he won't get him. Don't do that, my brother. I will come get you. Please don't do that. Says, you're talking about a man who's been here for three years. I drove with a young 18 year old Bahamian <laughs> past Eastern Road, Montague. And he said, in amazement, wow, it's beautiful out here. He lived in the South, never seen Montague. We ain't doing something right. Billions passed through the country, and so many residents are just in a depressed state. Yeah, it's a problem. All right. Is it Juan? That's the realest thing you ever said. Plenty of people in this country live like kings and just waiting for us to jump ship so they can take our place. If they can live in paradise, so can I. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I ain't going nowhere. And that's what Jeff was telling me, and my wife was like, why can't we make it here? I was like, you know what? We are making it here. It's a struggle. Y'all like to kill people. Y'all can't drive. But... I'm going to make it here. And I got options. So if I can't, if I don't need to live here with y'all on New Providence, I got other options I could go to. I'm going to have no IMAX. But I'm not going to abandon my country to struggle in some other man's country when there's ample opportunity for me here. It's not always as easy as I'd like to access it, but I'm going to go do it. All right. Oh, so you think because the rich is having a great time in our country, that means you can of these rich Bahamians too. This is how you forgot you're a Bahamian. Eh? Yeah, there's rich Bahamians. I, my wife just went to a wedding and I've, I've, she's like, I've never seen anything like this in my life at Venice Bay. That's Bahamian. It says the Bahamas is now for foreigners and billionaires, not for us unless we fight for it. Hey, I'm with you. Let's fight for it. 
Where can you go in Nassau like regular spots and not get into trouble or hurt? Fish fry, nope. I'd rather be lost in space in a peaceful place in a hot spot with a bunch of illegal criminals. And that's what my wife was talking about. My wife was like, where's our, where are our children going to go when they get older? Because 15 years ago, my wife and I, we'd go downtown. There were like all kinds of spots and people were doing stuff. Uh, now I, I don't like to go out at night. You know? And they say, where are our children going to go? And I'm like, well, they'll figure it out. You know, They'll have their own social networks they'll go to places that are probably more expensive where the lunatics won't be at you know um they can take trips abroad and make accommodations uh different things like that you know but you're right it's a different situation than when i was uh coming up it's really different i listen if you came up in the 90s brother uh sister it was it was it was it was a a, a golden age yeah the 90s early 2000s G- a golden age Now, all the technology, all the great stuff that we have that we didn't have when we were younger, um, it seems to have not made our social uh, culture any better. We were better off without it. But yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Not if I could help it. I'll I'll go to a different island. I'll go to my ancestral home in Eleuthera uh, before before I go. Uh, I'll do a KB and go to Cuba. I, I will. And I'll, I'll come see y'all. I can do a radio show from Cuba. Will they let me do a radio show from Cuba? All right. We got to go to break. We'll be right back. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is the Guardian News Network update on the hour. Good afternoon, Bahamas. I'm Paige McCartney. Here's what's making news right now. Search and rescue continuing today at the site where that vessel capsized off New Providence over the weekend. However, Defense Force officials say so far no additional survivors or bodies have been recovered. Right now, they say they are using underwater drones, aerial search, and surface assets to surveil the area. As many as 60 people were believed to be on that 30-foot speedboat. However, 17 people drowned and only 25 people survived. Those survivors are being processed at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. While two Bahamian men ages 48 and 39 are in custody and under investigation in relation to that failed human smuggling attempt, the boat departed from the Sand Trap area and was reportedly en route to Grand Bahama with a final destination in the United States. Attorney General Ryan Pinder assured yesterday that those found culpable will face prosecution. To the extent that those uh, investigations reveal criminal culpability, uh, there will be no resistance by the government of the Bahamas in bringing the necessary Uh, criminal action and criminal enforcement action uh, against those who are deservingly so. Well, speaking to an influx in irregular migrants from that country, Prime Minister Philip Davis acknowledged the unstable and dangerous conditions within Haiti which cause Haitians to seek such risks. But he said despite international pressures, the Bahamas just cannot absorb the number of undocumented migrants that seek a better life in the country. The world is suggesting that we should absorb all of those who leave Haiti. Um, when I was at the Summit of Americas, they wanted me to sign on to an irregular mi- migration declaration. But we have our own peculiar circumstance that I keep reminding the world of. We are unable to open our borders to irregular migration and our refugees either because of our own limited resources and because they ask us to do things. But at the end of the day, What's the bill? You. And although there have only been two patients investigated for a possible monkeypox infection in this country, Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Philip Swan told reporters over the weekend that the Ministry of Health has a surveillance team in place preparing for other possible outbreaks. That's after surging cases of the disease around the world recently caused the World Health Organization to declare a global emergency. Swan said they are teaching local health providers and others what to look out for. Two weeks ago we did some training with the uh, health care providers and the uh, hospitality industry. 
about 200 persons just to tell them about what, you know, monkeypox was and what to expect and how to report it to the National Surveillance Unit if there was a problem. Symptoms of monkeypox include rash, which typically appears one to three days after a person has been exposed, fever, headache, backache, swollen lymph nodes, chills, and exhaustion are other symptoms. Right now, Europe is the epicenter of the outbreak, and the people most at risk for contracting monkeypox are men who have sex with men. And that's the news at this hour. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to pick up a copy of the Nassau Guardian out on newsstands right now. For details of these and other stories, also be sure to follow the Nassau Guardian social media platforms for up-to-the-minute and breaking news. Once again, I'm Paige McCartney. AP News is next. Girl, Junior just showed me Bella Boy in his phone. What you mean? He take picture of that good for nothing boy? Shh, you don't want Bella hair. You say that. You know she always say that's my good child. So what he doing in Junior phone? Oh, he there because the police looking for him. He on that wanted list. Wanted persons in your phone now? Yes, child. And when police want to find anybody quick, quick, after something happened, they can send pictures direct to your phone. Go to Google Play or App Store and search for Crack Crime Bahamas. Then pick install and we'll go straight to your phone. There is also a section on missing persons. Yes, girl, everybody needs to get this app so police can tell us right away when these people go missing. Just like an alert system. Yes, it has numbers for Crime Stoppers Bahamas so you can call and nobody knows you. Call directly to Miami and give the information without giving your name or anything about you. I tried the other day and when I hear Junior and his boys talking about where they hide those guns, I walk quick, quick round the corner and call that number. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Hello? Keisha, you something else, boy. Who this is? Tamika? You don't even remember my name? Wow, Dred. Girl, I've been so busy. You still planning a trip? Girl, and I can't wait. I right here online booking my car. You dare planning trip. You vaccinated? Girl, we had to. We ain't been nowhere since this pandemic star. Girl, and we got a 14-day vacation. Best vacation ever. <laughs> Girl, are you bro? Well, I know you's gonna get the vaccine, because you too like travel. When y'all get your vaccine? Girl, long time. Because you got to get your first dose, wait, then get your second dose at least two weeks before you travel. Johnny get his vaccine and he 12. Even Grammy get hers. <laughs> Child and Grammy say she ain't get no money. But I see her hiding not under the mattress. Child, let me send my list because I know you're going in shopping. He should don't play with me. Vaccinate today, live tomorrow. A message by Paho WHO, Canada and USAID. I'm Ben Thomas with an AP News Minute. We'll clean up damage assessment and searching as Russia pummels cities across Ukraine with artillery barrages and airstrikes. It's in the Kharkiv region where the mayor of Chihui says a school, cultural center, and the city's infrastructure were hit. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Moscow's goal is to help Ukrainians liberate themselves from President Vladimir Zelensky's government. Pope Francis has arrived at the site of a former indigenous residential school in Alberta, Canada, to deliver a long-awaited apology to the Catholic Church's role in Canada's policy of forcibly assimilating Native peoples. Elsewhere in Canada, police have reported multiple shootings of homeless people in a Vancouver suburb. They say a suspect is in custody. And President Biden's doctor says the commander-in-chief's COVID-19 symptoms have almost completely resolved. The president has been taking Paxlovid, an antiviral drug that helps reduce the chance of severe illness from COVID-19. I'm Ben Thomas. This wrap up on the World Athletics 2022 World Outdoor Championships in Eugene, Oregon, brought to you by Fidelity Bank Bahamas and by PowerAid, distributed in the Bahamas by the Caribbean Bottling Company. Well, Team Bahamas captured one medal, a gold by Shawnee Miller Weibo in the women's 400 meters on Friday night. And in case you missed it, this is what it sounded like. There's a roar from the crowd as there has been for every final this week. Miller Weibo has started very quickly. Closing down on Cofield. Remember, though, Paulino is the fastest woman in the world this year. But Mila Weibo's really set her stall out early as she runs into the evening sunshine. Cofield now beginning to go with her. It's a lovely, long, flowing stride of the Bahamas. Mila Weibo in lane three. Williams on the outside. Paulino is trying to get in the mix for the podium. And while she is coming past Williams, it's going to be all gold for Mila Weibo, the record breaker, the history maker. Paulino takes the silver, Williams the bronze for Barbados. Incredible from all three of them. But at last, 
At last, she completes her set of global goals. The first to do so, the Bahamian flags are flying high. She must now surely go down as one of the all-time great 400 meter runners. She's irresistible to watch. She hit the front after 150, held on beautifully round the second bend. And once she was into her stride, there was nothing to separate her from another golden moment. Her collection of golds is complete. Sean A beat out a field of Caribbean speedsters in a world leading time of 49.11 seconds, completing a golden cycle after finishing second of the world outdoors in two previous appearances. She's a world youth champion, world junior champion, world indoor champion, double Olympic champion, and now world outdoor champion. Devin Charlton shattered her national record in the women's 100 meter hurdles yesterday, finishing second in a semi final in 12.46 seconds. But in the finals, she crossed the line in seventh place in a time of 12.56 seconds. That event was won by Nigeria's Toby Amason in a world record time of 12.06 seconds. We'll be back with more right after this. I used to think of the bank as my personal ATM machine. If I wanted a new car, new furniture, a weekend trip to Miami, no problem, just max out the credit card or top up my loan. I was a big baller until I realized that 75% of my salary was going to pay back all those loans. Fidelity's personal financial coaching was the best solution. Fidelity gave me a plan with a debt consolidation loan that has a built-in savings that pays 5% interest. I now only have one low monthly payment, plus money in my pocket. Give Fidelity Bank a call at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit any of Fidelity's locations or visit a website at fidelitygroup.com. What's your flavor? Tell me what you got. I gotta have it some power right now. Now, now. Replenish me. Hydrate me. Bring power to my game. Oh, so let me have it. I need some power. So tell me what's your flavor? Well, the first Bahamian to ever compete in the men's decathlon, Ken Mullings, made good on his global debut by setting a new national record, scoring 7,866 points for a 17th place finish overall in a field of 23. If you're wondering, the Bahamas 4x4 women's relay team did not compete in the weekend's heats after some of them were experiencing flu-like symptoms. With that one gold medal, the Bahamas finished 22nd overall in the medal standings. The Bahamas has won at least one medal at four consecutive World Outdoor Championships now. The USA dominated the 10-day event in Track City, USA, with a total of 33 medals, 13 gold, 9 silver, and 11 bronze. The next World Athletics Championships is set for August 18th to 27th, 2023, in Budapest, Hungary. This wrap on the World Athletics 2022 World Outdoor Championships was brought to you by Fidelity Bank Bahamas and by PowerAid. Distributed in the Bahamas by the Caribbean Bottling Company. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Radio 96.9 FM. Uh, briefly, let me cover the uh, vaccine thing. So we got 24,000 doses of 
the pediatric COVID-19 vaccine, the uh, government to begin rolling them out this Thursday. This is ages five to 11, donated from France, facilitated through the COVAX facility. Said many families have been asking for it. We believe it will play a pivotal role in the opening of our schools and the expansion of the kids coming into next semester. Okay, so anyway, okay, fair enough. Uh, I find it troubling when you start talking about pivotal role in the opening of our schools. You don't have enough vaccine for all the children in school who are five to eleven. That's the first thing. Second thing is, um, I hope that uh, you don't start to give these schools the idea that you got to have children over a certain age vaccinated um, for COVID-19 because I'm, you do what you like and I'm not a crazy person or anything like that. I'm not comfortable giving my children the pediatric COVID-19 vaccine. Okay. And I'm not alone and pediatricians, uh, many, 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 many of them uh, are with me because just not enough is known. All right. Now, if you want a COVID-19 vaccine for your child, uh, they are available and 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 do what you would like. Um, I just don't, I just hope that we don't start getting into the vein of, oh, well, you know, uh, you got the children are going to be vaccinated to go dine indoors now. You know what I mean? Like, you notice nobody checks that anymore. When's the last time someone checked you for your vaccination status? Anywhere. Like, so you say like, well, Juan, that's not going to happen. But it, but it did happen, right? But it did, y'all did say to check in the hotel. You got to be vaccinated or have a test. Isn't that what happened? So I hope that you just don't start expanding that is all I'm saying. Um, if there are vaccines for people who want to get vaccinated, absolutely go ahead and get them. That's fine. Um, I pray that the strains don't get any different. Um, I don't know that these will protect from any other different strain that comes along. Uh, my children have had COVID-19. I am vaccinated. As it's still, if I got vaccinated, like, December, does it, is, does it still count? I've been vaccinated, and I've also caught COVID-19, and I didn't have it that bad. Maybe that was because of the vaccine. Hopefully that's the case. Uh, the kids weren't bad at all. I just don't want you to start, again, tying uh, people's freedom to do certain things, inhibiting people from doing certain things, because and tying it to vaccination status. All right? I, I, I don't believe that these vaccines will stop or will cause herd immunity. And I'm glad that you have them for the people who do want them for their children. I just want to be clear that we're not going to tie that to uh, people uh, being able to do different things. All right. Or make it more difficult for people to do different things, particularly children. It's already a lot. It says, morning, my friend. The few problems I have with Haitians are they think they're entitled to almost every country because they're Africans and we should give them any rights because of that. Secondly, they think by solving things, they either chop you up or burn everything up. Investors would never come to your country if they think once you get mad, you kill them or burn their businesses down. They need a better and more productive mindset if they want to grow as a country, discuss things, negotiate. Also, I don't want to tell people how to do illegal stuff, but if you're spending $10,000 to get on a boat in dangerous waters, go and buy those cheap floating devices that you use in the pools and beaches. Those cheap devices could save you and your kids from drowning. Well, that's the thing. If uh, as for the other stuff you said, I don't paint everyone with that brush. Um, we I deal with a lot of different people on a daily basis, and I find that nationality uh, these things matter much less than personal mores and values, all right, race, etc. They matter much less than the person's character. All right, so I deal with your character. I'm tripping off you, Asian or Chinese or African or whatever it is. I deal with your character, all right? Because, and you know what gave me this perspective? And I, I'm surprised a lot of Bahamians don't have it, right? Uh, living in a different country, um, in a location that was vastly, vastly uh, majority white. And the white people ran everything, had everything, owned all the systems, conducted all the systems. And then being from another country, you feel that people give you this, this otherness, right? And they just project it on you. I'm like, yo, I wasn't raised here. I don't know all your customs. I'm not familiar with, intimately familiar with all your culture. I'm more familiar with what reached the Bahamas, which is mainly hip hop culture. 
All right, but I'm no, I'm no less. I'm no. I that doesn't mean I can't think. It doesn't mean I can't uh, succeed, uh, do business. It doesn't mean I will squander opportunities. You know, and I and I was an intense feeling, and you get that too. And even when you're at the job, and you guys think I talk like an American, but Americans can hear you're from somewhere else. You know. And they're they're making fun of your accent, or saying you talk too fast, and they don't want to accommodate anything about you because you don't conform to just how they are. Yeah, you know? and it's an uncomfortable feeling and a feeling of otherness. And I don't know how you try to uh, integrate people when you take every opportunity to treat them like an other instead of being like, hey, let's accept that there's this diverse national uh, uh, plateau of nationalities and we're all working toward the good. So I'm not tripping off you being Asian. I, I do not care, right? What I want is what's best for the Bahamas. And if you're interested in what's best for the Bahamas, all right, you can claim your nationality. You can fly your fly. I got no problem with it. But at the end of the day, we all got to be working toward what's best for the Bahamas. And if you're not interested in that, then you shouldn't be here. All right. That's for anyone. Asian, American, British, French, uh, Melanesian, whatever, right? Uh, if you're not interested in what's best for the Bahamas, then, then you know, find your way somewhere else, is, is my opinion. All right? We all have problems. We're going to work on it together. All right? So we got issues with illegal Haitian migration. It's such as life. All right? We're going to try and work on making things better. Okay. We're going to work on strengthening our systems. We're going to work on stopping um, having people who are born here wait inordinate amounts of time, inordinate periods of time to uh, become citizens. We're going to work to do better because those of you who are here, those of us who are here and who choose to be here, we are interested in the collective commonwealth of the Bahamas. All right. And that's what I'm interested in. I don't care where you're from. You could be for, literally from Timbuktu. I do not care. All right. You just have to be interested in making the Bahamas better. And and I don't have any problem with anyone wherever they're from as long as they're here to do that. All right. So you had the like Chester Cooper got the well, let me not just say it's all Chester Cooper, but the minute the government um got the investor Electra uh, in Grand Bahama and underneath underneath it. And one of the things that they said they wanted was someone who's gonna have a they want to be have a long term relationship with Grand Bahama. And underneath the Facebook thing, they were all the live stream. Everyone, ah, oh, the foreigner, the foreigner, the foreigner, the foreigner. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with the foreigner actually wanting what's good for the Bahamas? I don't see the problem. Now, if you're saying they can extract all the money and suck all the resources, eh, that's one way to look at it. Although that is kind of just business. But as long as you're interested in doing what's right for the Bahamas, because uh, we all got to live here, uh, I'm, I'm interested in working with you on that. I don't care where you're from. You got to learn to speak English now, my boy, who been ill. <laughs> He's older, though. He been as long as I've been. I'm like, how do you not speak fluent English yet? Like, you think I was going to be in Haiti for 40 years? I can't speak Creole like, like everybody else? I don't know. He just, I, I, I'm amazed. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> All right. Let me read some of your text messages. No, it's the same text. So don't get me wrong. I speak Creole from growing up in the 80s. LOL. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let us see here. Uh, we had a call before we do that. Let me just read this. is transparency and accountability. So the prime minister was the summit of the Americas. And decided not to tell the Bahamian people he's changed, he's asked to change the immigration policy of the Bahamas. I just don't understand our leaders. Something as vital as this, and we never heard about it until now. Yeah, I, that confuses me too. Like, why we didn't hear that? Because we can't just allow everybody in. I mean, Juan, this vaccine is for Omicron, right? While well, B4 and B5 is what we're facing now. This does absolutely nothing to protect children. Yeah, I'm skeptical as well. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hey, well, what's up, brother? I'm good, Hello. bro. How's it going? I am great, man. Is it? This morning, I, I I listened to Dwight's show, and you had a 
Dwight Dem was talking um, basically about the same thing you're talking about with the with the Haitians that capsized in the boat. And Vaughn, you believe you got some cold, heartless human beings in this country that we live in in this this place called New Providence, just twenty one by seven. I can tell you stories. Listen, a texter text took that thirty cents, something like thirty five or twenty five cents they view mm-hmm. to text to say that you should take the the Haitians and carry them in and in, in Washington Square or something like that and flog them. I mean, and could you know? I'm trying to figure out: Do that person have children? Do that person have family members? Because I am not down with the Haitians migrating to here or the U.S., you know. I'm not down with it, and they're wrong, especially when they enter the waters of, of, of the Bahamas, which we have to protect our country for us. But still, born, they are human beings. They are human, just like me and you. They function just like me and you. They may not be as, as fortunate as me and you, but they are still human beings. You cannot... Look at people because of their color, their nationality, and class them as, as not human. Because at the end of the day, when God put bread in my body, he put bread in the Haitians' body, the Jamaicans. And now, don't get me wrong. Now, I ain't down with them coming here. They wrong. But what I'm saying to you from a humanity point of view, right, we have to try to look at it. Those people, they are wrong. They are wrong, wrong, wrong. But they're still human beings. And we must, as in our country, we need to stop this foolishness about Haitian, 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 Haitian. Let's talk about human, human, human. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. All right? So, yeah. human people, you know, let's, let's treat our, 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 whether they come here on boat, whether they swim here, whether they float there, don't just mis- mistreat people, man. Because if you want blessings from God, you got to bless people so God can continue to bless you. But it don't fall on you, Vaughn. It fall on your children's children. Have a good day, my brother. All right. Thanks, bro. All right. Yeah. Let me do some text. I'm going to do a break. So, hey, Juan, do I sense a bit of appeasement in your commentary? This country is steadily being depleted of its resources. I do, however, sympathize with what took place. Uh, I mean, I can't help what you sense, uh, but I'm not trying to appease uh, anyone. Um, I am just stating that I don't take a particular view. Um, but I, I'm not trying to appease anybody. I oppose uh, illegal migration. Absolutely, I do. Um, now, we can have an entire another discussion about if your parents came here legally and you were born and raised here your entire life, that somehow you are not considered uh, a citizen or a Bahamian, I, I think that's wrong. And that's not to appease anyone. I, th- I just think it's bad uh, policy. All right. It's, it was, it's bad. It's a bad thing to put in our constitution and it has undermined what we are trying to do as a nation. Uh, and so that's not to appease anyone. That's just to say, if you logically think about it, locking entire constituents of people who are born, raised in the Bahamas out of being Bahamian and able to, being able to legally participate in the Bahamas nationally, it doesn't make sense. Now, it maybe it made sense 60 years ago. Uh, it certainly stopped making a lot of sense uh, after independence. When was independence? 50 years ago? Maybe it made sense 50 years ago, 49 unrelated, but I hate that vaccine commercial. It's no one's business if you're vaccinated. So my skin crawls every time Keisha asks you vaccinated. Ms. Keisha, that ain't your business. <laughs> we need to get back to vaccination status. Being no one's business but your doctor. I changed the station to put the audio on mute so I don't hear that commercial. Yeah, my problem wasn't with the vaccine. I think it's going to make your head explode. I, my problem was just like, y'all are tying this to, to so much with, with so little basis. Um, we got a call, absolutely. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hey, Juan, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. I'm on a bad line, but I'll try to make my commentary very short here. Um, uh, okay. One, I'm very happy that the stance that the Prime Minister has taken in terms of trying to um, get the international community to understand that the Bahamas 
basically because of our, the financial status that we're in right now. We can't, definitely can't take much more people here. Uh, what is so sad about the whole thing, though, that, that, that I must take recognition for, and that is, you know, the, the, you know, we speak about the different treaties that this country signed on to, and it would have been nice to actually hear what some of these persons have been asking the Bahamas to do prior to this incident. That's why, I mean, this matter, that's why it's so important that Bahamians are, are well aware of these, treaties, these potential treaties that people are asking us to sign on to. And for right. that stance that the Prime Minister has taken in terms of informing them that there's definitely no way we can take on any more responsibility because of our financial situation. I, I give him full kudos for that. Thanks for taking my call, Juan. Okay, my brother. Thanks. So I'm going to show you something. We're on our own, right? <laughs> I don't mean this to knock anybody else. Let me read something to you. This is from Caricom. And so that's when, when I'm talking about saying this, when you talk about some of the Americans, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll let migrants and refugees. Y'all, y'all don't understand our type action we got going on. I think you're beginning to maybe with looking at how many uh, boats are starting to reach Florida. All y'all don't understand what's going on here. We got to be able to deal with our, our issues. We need some help. But we understand this issue. So this is a statement from CARICOM today. It's a Caribbean community of which we're a part, right? Caribbean community is extremely saddened. Statement on Haitian migrant deaths. The Caribbean community is extremely saddened by the tragic loss of life at sea of a number of Haitians off the coast of the Bahamas on Sunday, July 24th. All right? I can't get past this point, but I'll read the rest for you. But it's hard for me to get past that. I'll circle back to that. This latest disaster brings to the fore, once again, the desperate situation in Haiti and the reprehensible nature of the actions of those who are trying to take advantage of people trying to escape. For certain, uh, CARICOM will continue to work with Haiti and the international community to bring peace, security, and development to our sister nation. Uh -huh. CARICOM looks forward to the apprehension and bringing to justice of those who prey on the hopes and aspirations of vulnerable people. The community extends its condolences to the relatives of those who lost their lives and to the government and the people of Haiti. Yeah, now, listen, if you are my Caribbean community, and you don't understand the archipelagic nature of the Bahamas, we have a problem. So I don't know who drafted this. I'm talking about off the coast of the Bahamas. Uh, they were in the Bahamas, and they were off the coast of nowhere. All right? So I think near Blackbeard's key. Come on, man. I know where all y'all countries are. All of them. And you ain't even got to put nothing, just show me the map, I'll tell you. Couple I might get wrong, <laughs> but just about all of y'all, I know where your countries are. I don't know what the capital of your country is. You gotta, you gotta try to understand us before you uh, seek to look at our situation and, and, and make judgment calls. One more call, good afternoon, welcome to the revolution. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. McCartney. Hey, bro, how's it going? Yeah, this is a provocative conversation. You know, Mr. McCartney, being real, right? You know, uh, I, I grew up out east, but, you know, I, I, I was always in the inner city from, from, from primary school time. Just, I, I live in the inner city, right? I have a mm -hmm. business in the inner city. And I've seen the, uh, amount, the proliferation, the increase in the amount of immigrants in the inner city. Like, you know, people rent them their homes. And there's a lot of immigrants in the inner city. And people who don't live around them, you know, I, I integrate. I, I almost integrate with them now because I go to them, I spend money with them, I know them, some of them cool with me, they, I could do things for them, they do things for me. So there's no xenophobia here. The xenophobic narrative is a bunch of BS. They are xenophobic. That's why they won't integrate and they won't come out the bush and integrate with us. We want them, but we don't want them in the bush as form of a parallel society, all right? You understand that, Rick, brother? No. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, again, I, I think you painting them all with a broad brush. Yeah, but you know, I don't need no one to agree with me. Yeah, but no, but I, I, I'm not painting them with a broad brush. That's what I'm saying, Mr. McCarthy. What I'm saying, I, 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 anyway, I, I, I already have a bunch of Haitian demon friends. It doesn't matter. I'm coming here to speak for the demons and the truth. Now, what, 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 what should be known is that the, 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 obviously, with the money that they're spending to be smuggled, right? The smugglers' fee. People here are wiring the money, so the government either should tax the money or find some other form of impediment. There's nothing wrong with them wiring their money to their people, but you could, if they could track all the drug money and whatever, they should be able to track who wiring, who to facilitate human smuggling and human trafficking. This is what they do with drug people too when they go to wire the money. All these different things. See, I know this is a one-way paradigm, all right? So they, they really are just talking, talking. You, you, you mentioned 
them not speaking English. But if the government really is serious, they'll find a way to curtail this. They will find a way to curtail this. All right? And mm-hmm. another thing is, uh, I'm sick and tired of this talk about vaccinations, right? Dr. Gerd von den Bosch was totally correct. I've been on the radio talking about escapeology and viral immune escape. The BA5 or whatever and the BA4, those are escaping the vaccines. And we, we know about antibody-dependent enhancement and all of these things that I've been mentioning that people don't want to learn about or think it's just some theory. This is the reason now why the vaccine is, is, is ineffective. And they know this. And they're still pushing these foolish narratives on the radio, man. Have a good day. Thanks, bro. I'll say this. Here's where I agree with 52 in that the, clearly some of them, as someone from uh, with Asian roots was, was telling me, uh, clearly some of these people would have been, the money would have been sent to them. All right. So firstly, we do tax that money. Um, secondly, we should, and I'm, I'm not like Madlock or nothing, right? Or Inspector Clouseau, right? But if it were me, I'm going to take the identities of the people who uh, survived and or people, people who were on that boat, as well as the Bahamians. I'm going to take all their identities. I'm going to cross-reference them with all the money transfer services. You have to have identification to, to receive or send money from this country. And you got to have it from another country, if you're in another country. If you're doing any of the normal uh, ways, Western Union, money, all that, you have to have identification. All right? I, I ain't asking you. I'm telling you. Because I've sent money. Okay? So I would cross-reference those things and try to figure out where this money's coming from and try to target some of those people. Because what you got to do is you got to target the people who are perpetrating the service, Right? Because you always get to have people who want, like, that's like, so you can have people who want drugs, right? You can have people who want to buy prostitutes. Um, you got to stop the people who are perpetrating the crimes. Um, and therefore, there's no market for it. All right. Although they say prostitutes should be able to be licensed sex workers. And we'll have that argument another day. We'll have that conversation another day. Because there's, there's a lot of people who are actually subject to human trafficking who are engaged in prostitution. Um, and for lack of a better term, slavery? Yeah. All right, we'll do some more text messages when we come back. Stay tuned. Wendy's spicy means Wendy's spicy. Unlike the other guys, our spicy activates all your senses. For a taste of Wendy's spicy, try the new Chipotle Crunch Cheeseburger made with fresh beef or the new Chipotle Crunch Chicken Sandwich, both with delicious crispy jalapenos, Chipotle aioli, cheddar cheese sauce, and much more. Taste the Wendy's spice in every bite of irresistible Chipotle Crunch chopped fries, too. Stop it today for the flavor you crave. Wendy's, different inside and out. When it comes to picking a pharmacy that is convenient, reliable, and puts you first, only one name comes to mind, Will Max Pharmacy, a team of trusted and trained pharmacists ready to serve and assist you with all your pharmaceutical and over-the-counter needs. We also carry beauty and hair products as well as household and everyday supplies. Open seven days a week, 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. NIV drug plan is accepted. Cut down your wait time. WhatsApp new prescriptions and refills to 817-4067. Visit Wilmax Pharmacy today. Pontiana Drive, opposite University of the Bahamas. Call 323-1037. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. For 25 years, Advantage Insurance has provided coverage for your most prized possessions, offering insurance plans to cover your vehicle, home, business, and boat with customized options that work with your budget. Now, Advantage says thank you to all our loyal customers and business partners over the past 25 years. Call 356-0285 or visit Advantage Insurance on Collins Avenue today when every dollar counts, count on Advantage. Celebrating 25 years of service. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. 
Fresh news, smart talk, all the day. Welcome to the revolution here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. My name is Juan McCartney. So good to have you with us. Okay, so 52 was speaking about um, an unwillingness to integrate uh, by the Haitian community. Uh, I see we got we to gotta, uh, establish the parameters of what it is we're saying for us to discuss it properly. So when we're talking integration, not just in 52's uh, case, when we're talking integration, uh, what does what does that mean uh, for you? Because technically integration is just the opposite of segregation. So integration is the opposite of separation, uh, pretty much, right? So integration is just People who were separated before being put together. All right. That, that's all. Now, what I believe people mean by integration is that they want to have people, and you, you're going to call me an appeaser or a sympathizer or whatever like this. It doesn't make sense to me. And I was offended by it when I was uh, uh, living in the US when people would say this to me Why are you flying a Bahamian flag? Well, why can't I fly a Bahamian flag? Are you in America now? Oh, okay. Why? What, that, that means what? I must forget where I'm from? I, I do not... Uh, <laughs> I can no longer eat Bahamian food? We would get together and eat Bahamian food, the Bahamian people I could find, you know? We weren't plotting the overthrow uh, of the American government. We just were getting something that was getting together for something familiar with our culture. I went to my uh, aunt and uncle's uh, 50th wedding anniversary in Canada a couple of a few years ago, about three years ago. And, you know, there's a, a my uncle's Jamaican, um, my aunt's Bayman, of course. And they have a large community of, a relatively large community of Caribbean people, some African people thrown into. And they got together and we had Caribbean food, right? They had a thing at a hotel, which was all catered, which is nice. And then we had a thing in the in the backyard where we all ate Caribbean food. Anybody like we're gonna we're gonna uh, destroy Canada, we're gonna tear it down from the inside. We're gonna you no, know, we were just appreciating our culture from where we come from. They've been my aunt's been in Canada fifty years, right? Her children, her grandchildren uh, are Canadian. Does she go and hide her Bahamian flag like uh, un, under the sink? So if you're saying integration is. Haitians should forget where they come from and not practice things that are familiar with their culture or their parents' culture. I disagree. I disagree. And to the extent that our laws make it difficult for people to feel fully a part of the Bahamas if they don't have legal status, then that is something that we should work on as well. Do I think that you should just live in enclaves and only deal with Haitians? And da, da, da? No, of course not. All right. But I see people get mad about flag. Why are they having flag day? Well, for Christ's sake, what do you, you know what I mean? Come on. When, when the Rastas uh, are flying the Pan-Africanist flag or the Ethiopian flag, why are they flying that? No, it's, I don't understand the problem. Look at the Asian flag, everyone out partying. Yeah, it's something that they grew up, no one was a reason to party. I don't, uh, y'all look at any sign of like, you ain't doing exactly what the Bahamians do to be like, y'all ain't trying to be a part of us. Y'all ain't trying, I don't think that makes sense. All right, I'll listen to me carefully, carefully. My children are going to know their Bahamian and they can go live wherever in the world they want. They will recognize that they're Bahamian and take the Bahamas with them no matter what their passport says. And I will weep and wear sackcloth and ashes and gnash my teeth the day my children live in a different country and say they don't recognize that we're Bahamian, that they're Bahamian. I would, I would, it would break my heart. 
Clay Thompson was born and raised in the United States of America. He, he carried a Bahamian flag when he won the championship because that's a part of who he is. It doesn't make him any less American. It's just a part of who he is. And that's the way I view it. Now, people may have, have different experiences. Again, you call it what you want appeasement, everything like that. But I understand people cling to a culture that's familiar uh, to them. And, and I don't blame them for it because I, I do the same wherever I go. You'll never hear me go, I'll, I'll, no, I'm not Bahamian. A ever. Anywhere. Uh, you should throw eggs at me if you ever hear it. Me deny where I'm from. No matter where I go. Let me see that. There's a lot of text messages. I miss all these. Hold on. Let me read them. So, I'm still scrolling up for the love of God. Okay. Juan, you have to mention Mullings. You realize what he just accomplished? Competing against the top in the world in 10 events. That's super amazing. Yeah, Ken Mullings. Yeah, he did great. Absolutely. This says desperation is not an excuse to risk your life or commit crimes. Yeah, well, I suppose. Uh, I, in my heart, I want to feel that way too. Like if you're... I ain't lived in a situation where they're kidnapping people and cutting them up. And stuff. I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm not living in a situation where the average uh, weekly uh, income is $5. Uh, you know, I haven't lived in that situation. It says we have to stop making excuses for disorder. I agree. Yeah. Juan, what's with the pictures? I'm wondering openly that if this was a pleasure yacht, would pictures be taken of foreigners in that manner? I mean, couldn't the bodies have been covered? Maybe I'm overthinking this, but your thoughts. Uh, the pictures, I think people are just fascinated with, with, with death and spectacle, and they've just become so accustomed to recording something so they, that they can share that they don't even think about the ramifications of it. And I, I won't say I don't look at the pictures, but I don't need to see dead bodies to understand someone died. Uh, this is Juan, don't worry about people calling you racist and all that. Please don't be a Haitian sympathizer. I think I read that. Good day when a small number of Bahamians are to blame because of corruption, greed, and treason. If there was no door open for the Haitians to risk their life to come, then we would not be having this conversation. True. Fair enough. Yeah. It says, bro, you're a fair person. Uh, the, xeno, the xenophobic narrative is bull. They will cry xenophobia until they have outnumbered us. They facilitate player hate us who have accommodated. Uh, they're, they're able to afford these smuggler fees. Because Haitians here wire money to them, the government can levy taxes or fines to impede this, just track the transfer. This is easy in the digital paradigm. The government lacks the will. I agree with uh, quite a bit of that, quite a bit of that, actually. That um, not that they're going to outnumber us, but um, that the money wired here uh, can be tracked. I mean, if you just say kick the door open, everybody come, there's a possibility of, of, of being outnumbered per se. But what is, I mean, what does that look like? It says, as a white Bahamian from Eleuthera, we don't support Haitians or half Haitians. And your people is from Eleuthera too, so I know you share my sentiments. Don't rope me in with that. You, you are your own with that one. I, uh, that sounds a little extreme for me. Hey, hey Rachel, you're from Eleuthera, but I don't share that sentiment. The sand trap property is the center of many human trafficking incidents. It is instances it is known the property looks like it's set up for human trafficking of nefarious nefariousness with an apartment complex covered in privacy lattice to house the migrants while they accumulate the passengers to make the trip. Sad that we can't control not one known property. I don't know who owns the sand trap, and I don't mean to like step on any toes, but can the government please uh, compulsory acquire that property in the natural interest and bulldoze it? put up a wrought iron fence with barbed wire around it and then build a canal gate at the entrance to the harbor that we can say who comes in and out of it? We could do that, right? Juan, how you know that ain't gangsters uh, migrating? We don't know. That's what you said. You said we just don't know. Security was rather, yeah, we don't. We don't know who come in. That's why you don't. Just say, just come on through. We don't know who coming. 
says Haiti may have millionaires, etc., but there's an abyss between the haves and have-nots there. It will remain dysfunctional if they do nothing to create a large middle class and lift people out of abject poverty. Their failures are detrimental to all countries in the region. I'll say this. The Haitians I know, I don't know them all. Again, like I said, the Haitians I know, they're not proud of their government. Uh, they're proud of their culture and their ties to their country. I have, I hear very few Asians. I don't know them all. Again, who go, yeah, uh, electoral system, uh, Trump tight, right? Uh, a, a justice, a real thing, right? Uh, the litigation process, if you want uh, civil recourse, absolutely uh, functioning as it should be. I've heard none of them say that. I heard all of them say it's complete dysfunction, all right? But we love the, we love our country. Y'all say y'all love the Bahamas, but we have some dysfunctional stuff. Now, we ain't dysfunctional on that level. This says those Haitians that take that risk until better not be because they don't have opportunities in the Bahamas. Because if you could have make $8,000 over here, you had better opportunities in the Bahamian. You had some opportunity now, I ain't gonna lie to you. While we have JP's registry offers, immigration, defense force, and a few regular Bahamians who are involved in selling out the Bahamas for money. There has to be an intense investigation and audit, especially in the registry development. Um, I think I think I agree with that too. Says you guys will do anything to make black Bahamians look bad. The Bahamas never took away again one humanity. The Bahamas have only been a blessing to Asian through citizenship, remittances to job, et cetera. If you haters want to condemn a country, condemn the country that allows Hispanics to pour over their borders. But deport and repatriate Haitians, condemn that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you're running on with. Do anything to make black Bahamians look bad. Like some of y'all send this stuff. Send me y'all names when y'all send this stuff. So I could so you so people know who you are with with this stuff attached to you. All right. When we talk about someone in a particular way, you can strip them of their humanity. Words have meaning to them, or you wouldn't be offended by them so easily. All right. Send me y'all names with this stuff, and like, I don't know, like what school you went to, something so we could identify you. Who sound crazy? All right. You can talk about Haitian migration in a way that isn't disrespectful to Haitians themselves because there are problems with Haitian migration. And if you can't understand that, then there's no use in, in listening because I'm never going to get through to you. All right? You can't expect to have a conversation with people and just speak any way you want. It doesn't work like that uh, and, and get results. Right? I've worked with a lot of people uh, being in management. I don't just talk to everybody any way I want. I don't just say, I may feel a certain way. I don't say everything because you're not, it's not going to be effective. It's not a strategic and sensible way to approach a conversation. It's just not. Now, if you can't understand that, that you somehow in your warped mind think that we're trying to make black Bahamians look bad and black Haitians look good, then I, there's nothing I can say that is going to make sense to you. So what I would prefer you to do is just send me your name and something that we can identify you with, and people can have no doubt uh, that you're a fool, um, as now they may not know because you choose to remain silent on issues like that when you don't have anonymity. All right? So send me your names so people can know uh, that you're foolish. All right? It says, I sing it loudly, then have a Bahamian night gathering with all the Bahamian foods. What, the thing? Yeah, the, the national. Oh, it says, I do the same when I'm in a foreign country where I came over legally, though. I display my Bahamian flag, but we have illegals flaunting their indigenous country while disrespecting our immigration laws. It's disgusting and we don't like it. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't ascribe motive to everybody who's doing it. I just figure they're proud in their country. I don't know if that's like a, a big, like, middle finger to the Bahamas. All right. We got a call. Let's do a call. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Good afternoon, Mr. McCartney. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, Mr. McCartney, um, this place called the Sand Trap. That's someplace in Coral Harbor, right? I have no idea. Well, uh, I know a place called the Sand Trap. That's someplace right in Coral Harbor. Oh, no, no you say Sound I, 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 I thought you said, no, no, I, I, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought you said Town Club. I didn't understand you. Sand Trap? is located on West Bay Street, uh, just uh, west of Fish Fry. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, good conversation, and um, um, keep it up, Brother McCartney. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it very much. All right. 
Let's take a quick break and we'll be back, okay? You do coffee your way. Double shot decaf cappuccino. Light roast Colombian no milk. You do vacations your way. Hiking boots, tent, mountains. Five-star hotels and theater. And now you can do insurance your way. Online. Email. Chat. WhatsApp. Or in branch. For home, car, travel, boat, or business insurance, do it anyway with NUA insurance agents and brokers. Visit NUAinsurance.com, call, or stop by a branch today. I used to think of the bank as my personal ATM machine. If I wanted a new car, new furniture, a weekend trip to Miami, no problem. Just max out the credit card or top up my loan. I was a big baller until I realized that 75% of my salary was going to pay back all those loans. Fidelity's personal financial coaching was the best solution. Fidelity gave me a plan with a debt consolidation loan that has a built-in savings that pays 5% interest. I now only have one low monthly payment, plus money in my pocket. Give Fidelity Bank a call at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit any of Fidelity's locations or visit a website at fidelitygroup.com. Happy anniversary, my gateway. Did you know that you can request and pay for over 35 government services on mygateway.gov.bs? Sign up today and access government services online with efficiency and simplicity. It's a celebration of a year of collective success on our digital transformation journey. My Gateway, making government work for you. Revolution here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We have a, little, a few minutes left. I won't get to all these texts because there's a lot. But you know, I, again, when you guys call and ascribe motive to what I'm saying, I want to make black Bahamians look bad. Like if you think that of me, please don't bother messaging me. What are you, what are you doing? If you think that poorly of me, that I'm trying to make someone look bad because they're black or Bahamian or whatever, don't talk to me, please. Keep it to your, talk to your friends. Go on, so don't send me messages like that. It's ridiculous. I right? try to think through what I'm saying. You just think I'm trying to make black people look at them. What are you listening to me for? Why would you, why would you even tune in? I'm so confused. Juan, what's up with our athletes and Bahamians in general? Purposely dropping the Bahamian dialect after one or two years living in the U.S. Bahamians, please stop it. I hate when we do that. Jamaicans will live here for years and never drop this accent. Uh, you ain't never heard a Jamaican drop their Jamaican accent to speak to an American or Bahamian? For real? <laughs> it is called code switching, um, as I'm sure you're aware. And it is something that is in particularly people of black descent uh, for uh, generations. Uh, we now frown upon it because we say it's not being authentic uh, to our culture, but it's always been a part of our culture. So we have a lot of descendants uh, from the Gullah Geechee culture uh, in the United States, and they have some cross-pollination from us. And our accent, the way we speak, came up uh, as a way to communicate amongst ourselves so that the uh, slave masters wouldn't understand it. So you talk one way to uh, your fellow slaves and you, you speak another way to the slave master. Now, if you want to translate those parallels into today and maybe kind of figure out why we're doing some of the things we're doing, we could deconstruct it psychologically. But it's, it's code switching and it's been a part of our culture for a long, long time. All right? And I don't drop 
my well, people y'all tell me I don't talk like Bahamian most of the time anyway. But I don't drop my Bahamian accent, but I do understand what it is to have a heavy accent and people hold that against you and ask you over and over and over again to repeat yourself as if you're a drooling moron. And so the 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 desire to speak more clearly that may not be as familiar with your own people um, is different uh, when you're surrounded by people who don't speak the same way you do. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so I don't hate you for it. Now, if you just hit the plane and you talking like you from Alabama in the 1950s and you've been in the Bahamas all your life, then you got to try to ask yourself why you're doing that and uh, what about it. Uh, What about it is appealing to you? I <laughs> get it. People do it to me where I work. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I can't understand that. I'll be, I'm, I'll be speaking like this, mind you. What about what I'm saying? Do you not understand? Oh, you're talking too fast. You're, seriously? You know I'm speaking English, yes? That's like with the Jamaicans. And people be like, I don't understand Jamaican. I'll be like, they're speaking English, bro. You can't understand what they're saying. You could ch- if you speak English on this planet, I can pick up what you're putting down, no matter how you try to say it. Anyway, we got to go. We'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing, and we'll maybe talk about this. We'll see what else is going on. Okay? You guys uh, take care out there, and have a great day, Bahamas.